Welcome to Pagan Crafting. I'm your host, Kara. Today we're going to make a do-it-yourself honey beehive made from a terracotta pot. Loving this idea for either home decor or your altar. In this case, I'm using it for my altar for solar magic for the month of June and July to like power up my visualization, my intention. Join me today as we make this sweet little beehive. first going to start off with is two different types of rope uh, one that's about half an inch thick and you can actually go buy both of them I've chosen a thinner one because it's happened to what I have so I didn't have to go buy any a nice little this was about a four four inch terracotta pot and we're going to use some hot glue today as well as some craft paint you could use some sparkles if you'd like you can make your own bees or you can buy your own bees embellishments now, since I'm going to be using this for my altar, I'm going to have with every every line that I bring along, along this rope around this terracotta pot, I'm going to bring an intention of solar magic, sun magic. I'm looking for a cleansing, a release. The sun will burn away any negativity. So I'm powering this up for the months of June, July, and August, the, the powerful summer months here in Canada. And it'll stay in my altar till then, till my moon rolls around, and then I'll probably switch it up. I only switch up my altar usually about four times a year. I go by the season. Sometimes I switch it up for you guys, and we can and I just get inspired and I wind up changing things around, but usually I go by the four seasons. I like to change things. So starting off with a line of hot glue, you're just going to follow that along with your rope and build it up, build it up all the way along. Again, if you're going to be using this for your altar, think of an intention as you go along, put that into your artwork. And as you see that I've chosen of the colors that I have around me, I've even chosen the yellow, I have the bee work, I have my bee shaman wand here, I have my little beehive here by my goddess, all these little things I want to like take that energy as I'm looking around, as I'm building my artwork, I'm, I look at the energy and I focus it into my artwork that I'm making. Even as fun and as easy as any craft, you can still put intention into it. Now I'm just using a thicker rope here, which you could have used all along. Um, I just didn't have enough for the entirety. If you don't have extra rope here, I'm gonna be building it up on the inside so I have something to wrap it to. It needs a bit more of a hive shape to it. You could also mold some uh, tin foil as well. Some aluminum foil, you can kind of shape that and then glue that on and then build up the rope around that whatever is most easiest for you or whatever crafts you have easy accessible i try to go through whatever i have first before buying and i try to recycle reuse crafts that are maybe are things that i haven't used in a long time it's just sitting around i might repurpose and there we go it wasn't too bad it didn't take very long here And while it's still hot, I give it a bit of a mold with my hands. I just squeeze it into place and, and it just helps bring it out. So now we're going to wrap the rest of the rope that I have around that. The bee spirit is an incredible animal. The homes that they build and how they build it is when it's totally freestyle in nature is such a work of art. 
These little beehives are not what you'd see totally in nature, but I love the shape of these. And it's a little bit more rustic looking. You could also use a gold rope if you wish as well. But I prefer the rustic look of this rope. So now just blobbing some glue in the top and tucking in the excess end. Now you could also hang a little rope in through that. You can just tie a little knot and a loop and pick it up through and you can hang it in your tree if you want outside. I think I'm going to rock a little door opening. I'm just looking for any imperfections on this. Maybe something I'd want to cover up, to be honest. So then just have a look around to see if there's any blobs of glue you want to hide. So I just tacked down one side first and build it off. I did want more of a doorway shape than a circular square. So you gotta manipulate the rope a little bit because it wants to go in a different direction. So I just play with it. Tack it down as I go. And if you wanted with the door you can make little windows too if you so wish but I think the door is sufficient because I'm gonna be adding lots of dripping honey coming out of the hive so I decided not to go with little windows which would make it more fairy-ish which I am working on fairy doors. I gotta get that video out. I gotta finish editing that video. I've been making fairy doors for my travels wherever I go. I end up, woohoo! Wait till you see those. So now that's all tacked down and ready. We are gonna paint the doorway. So just some simple, cheap, acrylic black craft paint. And we're just going to fill it in. And you don't need to paint around the doorway. You just paint inside so it looks like a little bit more depth and a little hole to go into. I think the bees are going to be pretty happy with their little home. There we have it, super quick, super easy. Now what we're gonna have to do is we are going to start putting hot glue, you're gonna blob it on and make it look it like it's dripping honey. So you can, when you see it cool down, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about a little bit more. But just, don't just blob it on and tell us ours like gooping down, really try controlling it if you can and it'll create a better look for you. Depending on how hot your glue gun, you could really, really control the lines on this. Some of the bigger hot glue guns, they are gonna blob faster, so you might have to just to really take your time with some of those. Have some good lines coming from the top because there's oozing out of honey out of everywhere. Honey, honey, honey. Who eats honey here? You gotta comment down below. I have honey even in my coffee. I don't even have white sugar in my house. I'm against white sugar, so I only have, uh, only cook with honey. I, use, I do use a brown or a raw sugar for my baking, but uh, never any white sugar, but the honey is in everything in my house. Look at that. Already that looks kind of cool. Now that those are all cooled down, we should paint. So what I've done, I've taken a mixture of a craft acrylic, more of a like a canary yellow, sun yellow, and then the color color tint, and a touch of like a a bare brown, a chocolate brown. I'm just going to be toning down the yellow ever so slightly with just a touch of the brown, and mixing in the color shift with that too. 
the color shift wand knot I was popping out as excitable as I did so I want to later on adding a little bit of pizzazz to it and I'll show you what I mean in, uh, in a moment so instead of brushing it on and you'll having to do quite a few layers if you dab it on it'll actually start cruising around the sides and it will coat the paint over top of when you paint when you paint over hot glue it tends to want to be streaky and you tend to have to do a lot of layers i don't feel like doing a lot of layers so i'm going to just blob it on tap it on and i wind up doing a one hit wonder so that makes me happy Now, yeah, I'm speeding it up, but definitely take your time. Take your time while doing it, getting all the nooks and crannies, and it's already coming out and looking so cool. I'm so excited about this little piece. Yee. already taking shape but I find that the color still is a little flat I think we should shine this up just a little bit more so I what I did I did a coat of the color shift which I didn't get any footage of but then I'm gonna take some of just straight up gold here now gold we're gonna dry brush on so you want to load up your dry brush first, create a little piece of paper towel, and you're going to blot off the excess because you want to load it up inside the bristles. So it's like, why are you loading it up? Just to wipe it out. But we want to get it inside the bristles really well. And we're going to do a brush up motion to catch, catch the sunlight coming from a one direction. I want the sunlight all coming down. So we're going to see more of the gold at the bottom and it's going to bring more of the detail out and more of the curves and shapes and stuff of the twist of the honey that you put on. This is where the magic is. This is where it brings out a bunch of the color. there super easy only took me a couple minutes to do quick easy dry brush and it now it just sets it up it just really makes it up to the next level just that little bit of dry brushing and I got these wee bees at the dollar store you can probably get them as little embellishments on all kinds of sites now one side they got a little sticky because they're made for cards or crafting going on paper but I took them off the bottom white sticky dudes and we're going to start hot gluing them around our little hive. So I want this little guy just coming right out. So he's going to go on first. I want him creeping out. Except he doesn't want to get glued down. Hey, the little guy. And then put him wherever you'd like. Just use a few of them. I'm using at least 10 of them, 8 to 10, 12. Not too many, but definitely have some fun with them. Get them all over the place. These little guys are happy to be here. Oh, they are so cute. I think I'll put one right there. Yep. Maybe a little one right over there. more maybe so what you can also do is you can do some ribbon I got this one ready I think I was gonna put ribbon on the top but because I really like all the honey and the bees coming out the top I didn't want to hide it so different places where you can put some ribbon would look really really adorable as well on the side on the top 
you could also get some flowers if i actually had a little sunflower i would put this on the side like that but i only had a poppy to show you this little one would be really really complimentary as well but have some fun do whatever you'd like you can throw some ribbons on there some flowers i made mine for my altar so i didn't want to get too cutesy with it and I'm going to use this again, like I said, to power up my spells, to help me concentrate my efforts. Well, thank you so very much for hanging out with me today and doing this craft with me. As always, it is a pleasure to chill with you. And, and uh, if you wish to see any more videos like this, throw me down a little like up and subscribe and ring that bell so you know when the next video comes out. And I shall see you then. In the meantime, have yourself a magical day.